Hello, Sri Vikrant, can you hear me? Yep. Good. Welcome, you're now the number one student. Everyone else, tie for last place. My microphone is not set up. Let me set it up. Uh, we have a question from Vishnu. Are we doing actual course material today? Yes. Uh, we will be, as soon as we get through lecture zero syllabus material, we will move straight into lecture set one uh, without much delay. So there will be uh, course content uh, that will show up on the exam today. Another question, this time from Vikrant, uh, is it gonna be difficult if we're not able to get the book? 
Um, put it like this, the recommended textbook is only recommended. It is not a requirement in order to do anything. However, I think it is a very smart idea to get the book. It's available through Amazon. Um, there will be, we'll discuss more during lecture proper. Did anyone have troubles logging in? As part of the security measures, I said everyone had to at least sign in to their Purdue.edu account. Did anyone have any problems with that? I take it no. For you, did you have any problems logging in to Zoom this time? Nope, not yet. Okay, glad it was uh, smooth. Yeah, but I saw two students having problem logging in the Zoom. Right. I think it's um, uh, because they haven't logged in with their Purdue ID. I think that's the problem with the facing. Okay. Yeah, Boyu and Kushagra will try to answer any things in the back channel of Piazza. I'll, I'll, I'll start an answer on Piazza. You can modify it. You need to log in. I will leave Piazza up to you two, Boyu and Kushagra. And then I will give it 30 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and get started. Vikrant, I am going to give you a very important responsibility for this class. Rick, Rinch, your responsibility is make sure that uh, the recording icon is going uh, before I actually start covering lecture slides. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're going to have a lot of very unhappy students uh, that are missing part of the lecture. So please make sure that I am recording. And if you see that I'm not recording, speak up.
I have to log out and log back in again, having a little bit of technical difficulties. Stand by. Looks like I'm back. Let me see if it'll let me share my screen now. It is now sharing my screen. Okay. Looks like there are 50 of us, which is more than I expected. Uh, if at any time you have trouble hearing me, please speak up. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're already about five minutes into our recorded time. So. Uh, welcome, one and all, to ECE 20002, Electrical Engineering Fundamentals 2. Today is the 13th of June of 2022, and I will be leading you through some of the basic syllabus and course description. So the first thing we're going to do is cover the syllabus material. This is available through Brightspace, and then we'll get into course description, uh, some little bit of a summary of what you can see later on in this course. So first of all, we have to start with the things that uh, I was told to uh, give. Uh, there, there isn't much guidance when you are a graduate lecturer, but the first thing they really tell you is what course you're teaching, when finals are due, and uh, what the textbook you're going to be using is. So our textbook is the Electrical Engineering Fundamentals 2, Purdue University Lectures from ECE 2002, uh, Summer 2020 edition by Talavich and Turlip, independently published through Amazon, uh, you know, as of that date and with that ISBN. And if you click on the title, it'll take you right to the amazon.com link where you can buy your own copy. Um, this is only a recommended textbook. Um, we've tried to structure this course so that at no point must you own this book. However, it is only about $40. It's a nice kind of superset of everything I cover in lecture materials. And it's just another person explaining what you're supposed to be learning uh, in a different medium. Uh, I highly recommend that you do buy it. Uh, less recommended than that is the solution manual, which uh, is associated with that. It's going to be very similar to a lot of the homework, oops, homework and exam problems that you are going to see. Uh, also independently published through Amazon. You can buy it. Um, I'm not going to force that on anyone either. Um, you could definitely get by without it. In fact, you probably might even learn things more thoroughly without that sort of, you know, crutch at your disposal. Uh, so um, enough about the textbook and, you know, the sort of outline of the course where the material is drawn from. Uh, I am Michael Robert Hayashi. I am a graduate student here at Purdue University. Uh, I am serving as your graduate lecturer. Uh, first order of business, I am a fellow student, uh, just one that's a graduate student and with a little bit more experience and competent to teach this course. So I will ask that you call me Michael, and in turn, I'll probably call you by your first names as well, unless for some reason you wish to be called differently. So please call me Michael. Uh, that's okay. I'm just a student. Uh, my office is in Wong uh, 3017. Uh, which is on the third floor of Long, the double E side of the building. Uh, it says on chip electromagnetics laboratory on the door. Uh, that's where I'm going to be for all my office hours. Uh, and I will also have a Zoom room open as well for those who want to uh, go through office hours that way. 
My email address is mhayashi at purdue.edu. And my office hours will be uh, every weekday, 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. or by appointment. Uh, again, hybrid in my office and Zoom. And if for some reason you want to meet on the weekend, uh, definitely email me and see if we can arrange something. Uh, it's possible, it's just I need a little bit of heads up if you're going to be uh, taking some of my weekend time. Uh, the course website will be Brightspace. There's no other website that we're going to be using for this semester. And the requisites, everyone should have one semester of Electrical Engineering Fundamentals 1, uh, in essence, ECE 20001, minimum grade of C. And, you know, you must have one semester of Ordinary Differential Equations, that's Math 262, 266, 366, or similar, uh, which may be taken concurrently. Otherwise, uh, ask for my permission and I will most likely grant it. So it's not just me teaching uh, this class. I have assembled a strong team of teaching assistants in order to be our teaching staff. Uh, since we're going with this sort of novel approach of somewhat synchronous components, somewhat asynchronous components, we've decided to stagger the office hours as much as possible, especially for people that have some form of summer work. So you'll see that a lot of these office hours are later in the afternoon or evening, uh, depending on your time zone. And, you know, one of those may be different for you. Uh, so we have Sophie Thomason Payne as one GTA, email address and office hours seen here, GTA Kushagra Kapoor, email office hours, Boy Yu Gong, email and office hours. And then we have one undergraduate teaching assistant, Pranav Valeri, uh, with his email address and office hours seen there. Uh, for the teaching assistants uh, office hours, there's going to be a single shared Zoom room uh, that kind of cuts down on any sort of issues with, you know, handing off Zoom rooms or people who want to be there. So please, you know, use this single link for all of Zoom. Let me go back, check to see if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, I will ask the TAs to sort of help me keep track of any questions too. No, I don't see any at the moment. So learning objectives. A student who successfully fulfills the course requirements will demonstrate an ability to one, analyze second order linear circuits with sources and or passive elements, two, complete responsive linear circuits with and without initial conditions via one side to Laplace transform techniques, three, compute responses to linear circuits using transfer function and convolution techniques, Four, analyze and design transistor amplifiers at low, mid, and high frequencies. Five, work with transmission line models to analyze circuits at high frequency. Six, use a CAD tool, e.g. SPICE, in circuit analysis and design. So the first five definitely deal with uh, very much, you know, traditional uh, lecture style elements of circuits, 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 amplifiers, and transmission lines, but also of circuits. Um, so you can see, you know, it's just, various things that we must cover, sort of a hodgepodge of materials. And the last learning objective, number six, uh, is definitely you want to be a more practical thing. Unfortunately, looking at how this class has been taught in the past, I don't see anyone that's ever done anything really uh, to mandate SPICE, which is a shame. It's a detriment to your development as engineers. Uh, if you have questions about SPICE, I will do my best to answer them uh, pursuant to this learning objective. However, it's not something that we're really going to test. So. Some of you are rejoicing, but you know, hopefully many of you are sad that we won't be able to cover the very, very useful tool of SPICE in order to analyze circuits. So here is the table with all the grading. So homework will be 20% of your grade. Uh, we'll have assignments due every Monday in this course. So not today, but for the next seven Mondays, there will be homework due in this course, unless I say otherwise. Uh, quizzes will be due every Friday, except those where we have an exam. And then exam one is on the 1st of July, worth 20% of your grade. Exam two, worth 20% of your grade. Final exam, worth 30% of your grade. Uh, we're shooting for Wednesday, the 3rd of August. That date may be subject to change. So as you can see, exams are worth a collected 70% of your score, homework 20%, quizzes 10%. So each student must satisfy all learning objectives and outcomes on the exams in order to pass the course. The curve on each exam will be set by an instructor. Final course grades may also receive a curve. Basically at the end of the course, you know, we might also decide to add a few points uh, here or there 
in order to bump people up to what we think are the correct, you know, uh, plus neutral minus uh, grade letters for the course. And I want, I keep wanting to see if there are questions, but I do not see any. I'll wait. Uh, well, the Friday quizzes have material from the lecture of that Friday. Uh, the idea is no, it should be uh, the preceding Friday and then up Monday through Thursday of that week so that you should, you could be able to take them at that time. Uh, again, quizzes will be handled asynchronously. I'll talk more about that in a couple of slides. Thank you for your question, Daniel. Lectures. Lectures will happen Monday through Friday at 9.50 a.m. through Zoom for those who want to participate that way. Later that day, uh, lecture recording will be made available on Brightspace. So that way you should be able to participate regardless of your circumstances. Uh, if you have some extraneous circumstances come up or hey, not extraneous, um, uh, exacting uh, circumstances come up, please let me know. Uh, imperative to dedicate multiple sessions per week to stay current with the lectures and assignments. That goes especially for you uh, uh, online students not participating through the live Zoom calls. Make sure that you're dedicating, you know, five one hour periods at minimum in order to <laughs> catch up on homework and lectures. Uh, you know, this is very dense material. I'm not going to lie. This is very hard material. Uh, I, I, I want that to be made clear. So I, I, I very much recommend that you spend a lot of time keeping current with this class. Otherwise, you know, this course will quickly become intractable to you. Uh, all the material for homework quizzes and stands drawn from recorded lectures over Zoom. Some inspiration will be taken from the recommended textbook and previous course offerings. So, you know, we, we are going to draw from the past a little bit. Uh, and we're going to hopefully give you access to practice exams from the past uh, and, you know, use the textbook for inspiration for some additional problems. Uh, I also have linked the summer 2020 YouTube playlist uh, by Art Trulep, one of the authors of the textbook as a supplement for your readings. Uh, if you want to hear it straight from the author's mouth, uh, you can watch his, you know, wacky little lectures uh, on the material. Homework, slide eight. Uh, assignments from the textbook. Uh, and I guess they're not always from the textbook, they're just drafted from uh, TA knowledge. Uh, we'll be assigned each week the class meets and do the following Monday, unless it's modified by the instructor. Submissions are due as a PDF through Brightspace, 11.59 PM on due dates. Uh, here's the big one. You are encouraged to work together on homework as a way to improve your learning and deepen your understanding of the course material. Every assignment must list the names of all students or tutors that provide assistance to you, but must contain all of an individual's own work. So please work together on homework, you know, work with at least one other person in this course. Please don't try to get through this course, you know, you know, just as you and then the teaching staff. You know, work in teams. Uh, you know, there's 122 students, so we could divide that pretty evenly into a number of, uh, of people. Uh, you know, I, I I don't really care how big the, your team is, you know, within reason, but you know, work in teams, and that'll hopefully get you better prepared for all the assessments in addition to get the homework done. But just if you do get things done, you must list the names of everyone who helped you on that assignment. Um, and if you have a tutor for this course, list the name of your tutor as well. Like this is this is a, a big deal. People who violate this will be punished. Uh, and, and you know, the, you know, not listing your uh, assignments uh, collaborators will be considered a form of cheating. So please keep that in mind. Uh, we recommend that you use a markup language like LaTeX or a free form note-taking application like Microsoft OneNote for your homework submissions. You know, please, you know, don't just, you know, type in a Word document line by line going down the page and, and just have a mess of equations and try to use an equation editor. Uh, it'll get very messy very quickly that way. So that's where we recommend either like a free form note taking app or some sort of markup language like LaTeX or Markdown or something like that. Um, or you can, you know, write it out by hand uh, in ink and then scan it. However you want to do it. We'll give you some flexibility. It's just recommendations here. 
Light homework not accepted in case of a well-documented emergency. Solutions will be posted on the course website after the due date. Quizzes, on each Friday without an exam, there's a quiz through Brightspace. It'll contain a pair of questions on high-level course concepts and to be easier than homework or exam problems. If there are more questions present, uh, we will only grade two of them. You won't know which ones. So, you know, there, there's only two graded problems. These are not meant to be hard. These are, you know, meant to be easier than, you know, homework or exam problems. It's meant so that as long as you have at least followed along with lecture and given some thought to these material outside of lecture, you should be able to complete these problems and, and, and get full, full credit. So this is kind of, this is meant to be a grade booster. You know, no matter what happens, you can at least, you know, get, you know, most of this 10%. However, inevitably, some students will fall behind and not do these, and it will be much to their detriment. No late acceptance or regrade requests. And uh, for those who have any sort of financial aid or scholarship purposes, completion of the first quiz this Friday uh, is mandatory for assessing initial course participation. So please keep that in mind. I will do one more slide and then we'll look back for questions. So. Examinations, two midterm exams, one final exam. We're going to be using Respondus. Uh, if you haven't had a experience with Respondus, it's basically like a really dumb browser that you know prevents you from having chat applications and uh, you know uh, unauthorized websites open at the time, and it makes sure you know everything you do on your computer is recorded. And it's not a great solution for this course. However, in order to maintain the sort of asynchronous nature of this course, where you can take exams anytime throughout the course of a 24 hour period, we can't, the TAs and I just can't be looking all the time over everyone's shoulder. Respondus is kind of the way to go. Midterm exams are one hour, final exam will be two hours from comprehensive. So students will be provided with an equation sheet to minimize the number of formulas that need memorization. That'll be given to you one week in advance of each exam. And you can use any graphing or scientific calculator on the exams, provided that it does not connect to the internet. So, if you have your super powerful TI Inspire CAS, you know, with limited programming capability, and you want to, you know, do that, it's great as long as you're not using an emulator of that calculator that requires internet access. So, you know, you can't say Wolfram Alpha is my calculator. You cannot say your phone is your calculator either. So, please keep that in mind. My recommendation for studying for exams is to complete practice exams in a lot of time. Practice exams are only useful if you time yourself doing them and try to figure out what you can do in a lot of time. Uh, reworking homework problems, then reviewing notes, then reading the textbook, then solving additional textbook problems. If you miss the opportunity to sort of satisfy any of the first five learning objectives during the midterm exam, you'll have an opportunity in the final exam. Looking back for questions. Uh, let's see. Two questions from each quiz are graded. Yes, weekly quizzes will be timed. Uh, yes, but like I'll give you like an hour to do them. So like you, the time shouldn't be the limiting factor. I just want to make sure you don't just like leave it up and forget about it. So there will be a timer. The timer will not be the limiting factor. Um, equation sheet be provided during the exam. Yes, it'll be the last few pages of the exam, which you will be allowed to separate if you print it off. Uh, it, it may not be a comprehensive equation sheet. The idea is that it just prevents you from me memorizing the most onerous formulas. Any other questions at this point? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. Moving along. Class participation, class contact as an online course. We will be monitoring your attendance, but we're not enforcing attendance in any way. We know that you know attending in person is uh, infeasible for many of you, though I'm surprised that about half of you uh, have managed to make it to this call. Thank you very much for making this a priority. Uh, if you're unable to work on the course for a week or more, please email uh, me or one of the GTAs as a courtesy. Uh, you know, this course, like I said, is very difficult. I don't want to sugarcoat that part. However, it is, it is doable. Uh, however, if we're gonna be taking a week off for whatever reason, or, uh, you know, please let us know as a courtesy. 
Your level of participation through Brightspace and office hours will be used to decide borderline cases when assigning grades. So if you're someone who is on that threshold between C plus and B minus, for example, but you've been attending office hours at least once a week and you answer, uh, you know, questions, uh, I guess not Brightspace, not so much as, you know, you log into Brightspace daily and then you answer questions on Piazza, you know, you'll get the C plus instead of the B minus. At the same time, if you're at the, you know, B, B plus threshold and you've only been to office hours once at the very end of the course and you never answered a Piazza question and your Brightspace login history is kind of spotty, then we'll say, you know, probably get the B instead of the B plus as, as an example. Class contact, we're going to be, you know, if we need to reach out to you, we're going to reach out through the email list through this course. Uh, if for some reason you need to respond through email, please include in brackets ECE 20,002. And yes, I expect you to type out the zero key three times at the start of your subject line in an email. Um, I'm filtering my emails. So this is the way to get to our attention as fast as possible. If the answer to your question is going to be beneficial to the whole class, answer may be at the start of the next recorded lecture instead of an email response. And if you have questions that are, you know, private, you know, please co contact the instructor as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as that problem arises, check your diversity email address daily for course announcements and other information. However, what if you have a question that doesn't need to be answered by a, a TA or part of the teaching staff, uh, you know, directly or solely? And it's a question that anyone in the class could answer. Like it's a question about how do you do this type of problem? You know, has anyone had trouble logging into Brightspace today? Things of that nature. Uh, you know, please use Piazza with this Piazza link as a forum. Uh, I signed up. If you were enrolled in this class as of two Tuesdays ago, you should have been signed up automatically. We've got a few people who have enrolled in the class since then. I will try to make sure that you get an invitation to Piazza. Uh, post your questions for the class under appropriate topics. There should be topic posts for the lectures, homework assignments, quizzes, exam prep, and miscellaneous. Uh, course staff will answer questions after a period of waiting for peer to peer responses. So, personally, I'm leaving uh, management of T uh, Piazza to the TAs. My goal is to log into Piazza as infrequently as possible, uh, given my other responsibilities for this course. Uh, and you also have an opportunity for your peers to respond. So don't expect, you know, a, an instructor response to happen, you know, within the first hour. You know, we're going to give time for your peers to answer as well. And I say Piazza posts are the best way to build your professional network with your classmates. Um, and in addition to professional networks, your friend network too. Uh, I have two people I did my ECE 2002 equivalent course material with. I did all my homework with them. And, you know, those are some of my lifelong friends in ECE. I can ask them problems anytime. Uh, I'm, I'm friends with them to this day. So this course can kind of be a bonding experience. Uh, and never post final answers or unethical materials to Piazza. Are we allowed to have cheat sheets for the exams? No, just the equation sheet uh, provided. Uh, First quiz available yet? No. Uh, quiz should be made available tomorrow. We haven't even gotten to material yet, so I really don't think you want to even attempt the quiz, but it should be easy by the time we get to Thursday's material. Uh, and uh, the quiz might be made available before Friday. We're still working out that, but like, uh, it's one of those things where uh, we, we intend for it to be completed on Friday. If for some reason you absolutely cannot log in on a Friday to do quizzes and exams, you need to let us know as soon as possible. Uh, you know, maybe make a Piazza. That might be a good thing for Piazza where it's just like, you know, in the quiz topics, I'm unable to log on Fridays because I have X recurring commitment. Is anyone else in the class in a similar situation? What can we do instead? That would be an acceptable use of Piazza. <clears throat> Did anyone have a question? If not, moving on. Cheating. 
So cheating on an assignment project examination will result in reduced score, zero score failing grade. It's going to be reported to the Office of the Dean of Students and to the EC Associate Head of Teaching and Learning. If there's any question about whether or not something is considered cheating, you know, please ask me or one of the TAs, preferably me, before you do any such thing. Um, like, you know, is there going to be a cheat sheet for exams? The answer is no. So please do not bring, show up uh, with uh, your own crib sheet on an exam. Uh, do none of these following things. Give or receive answers or information on an exam. Consult forbidden notes, books, or other materials during an exam. Work on an exam or modifying outside the allotted time or before a regrade. You know, don't get your graded exam back. You know, erase some things, write some new things. You know, that don't do that. We have PDF evidence of what you submitted. Don't do that. Um, copying assignments or giving away assignment to be copied, stealing course materials before posting, modifying grade records. If for some reason you manage to hack Brightspace and modify grades, like, wow, I'm impressed, but also that's cheating. Uh, and then destroying the work of other students, you know, that's absolutely not acceptable at, at Purdue. It's incumbent on each of you to monitor your surroundings for evidence of cheating and report it to the instructor without delay. Um, right. So we know you're going to have, you know, other chats going in this course. We know you're going to have, uh, you know, your friend network that you text and such like that. You know, if, if, one, if someone's cheating, you know, report it to the instructor. That's me. And, you know, there will be some sort of, you know, reward penalty system in play to make sure that, you know, cheating isn't happening where the, the TAs and I cannot see it. It's, it's imperative that cheating gets reported. It's been a problem in this course for many years and we want to, you know, really stop it from happening going forward. We're going to be observant. Uh, here's some miscellaneous other policies. Uh, if you need an incomplete grade, it's only going to be for those with a very well documented emergency submitted before the end of the semester. Uh, absolutely no makeup exams or retake exams. You only get one shot for each exam. You will only be allowed to take the exam at a different time or location. Location being a little bit flexible because it's online, you know, location is online. Uh, only for well-documented emergencies or unavoidable important conflicts. We list them here, what counts, what doesn't count. Anything in the similar vein will be treated accordingly. In general, the student to whom this policy applies will take the exam before the regularly scheduled time. Uh, you know, we have 122 students worth of materials to grade. Uh, we have a strong teaching staff, like I said, but you know, for our sanity, we can't be delaying the release of everyone's grades and the solutions for weeks on end, waiting for the best time for you to take the exam. Uh, you know, life, life isn't fair. Courses are not always fair. But we, when it comes to grades and grading opportunities, we try to be as fair as possible. All grades are final once submitted to Purdue University. No work done after the end of semester can change your grade. Very true. It's, it's final, final. If you're having difficulty with this course or have an issue with its administration, please contact me as soon as possible. You must use office hours to discuss the specifics of a graded exam. Regades must be submitted through email no more than one week after the solution is posted. And then since we just got through a pandemic, in the case of a major campus emergency or you know ongoing pandemic, however you want to view it, course requirements, grading assignments, exams, other policies are subject to changes beyond our control. And then I'll be broadcasting this through email. Emergency preparedness. Now, if we were meeting in a regular lecture hall or classroom, this is where I'd say, this is how we do tornado, fire drill, intruder drill, things like that. But I'll just say in general, if you're in the United States, call 911 if you have an emergency. You know, your own health and safety takes priority over attending these lectures. So if something happens where you must leave the lecture, please do so. Uh, Purdue Alert text messages are available to give updates to the ongoing emergency. If you feel threatened or need help walking campus, there are the emergency telephones. And then we have the Purdue Emergency Preparedness website link for you for more details. Let's see. Are we allowed to use office hours to ask homework questions? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, that's one of the many reasons we think people will be using office hours. 
any syllabus questions, structure things, this is all wrapped up in that document and basically copy and pasted it here to make sure everyone went through it. If you're an online student, make sure you're not just blowing off this portion. We're going to assume from now on everyone knows the syllabus. Without further ado, let's continue on. Are the exams going to be synchronous? No. You will be have any time in a 24 hour period to complete the exams. Um, the exam, midterm exams are one hour, final exam is two hours. Uh, you must get it done though by 11.59 p.m. on that Friday. Um, and you will use the Respondus browser to do it. Homework will be turned in through Gradescope? No. Homework turned in through Brightspace Canyon. Any other questions? If not, moving on. So now we'll get into the course description. So slide 17 is a very important slide uh, for you. So this is all the concepts that I could think of from ECE 20001. So you should be familiar with everything listed here, basically. So in the top in the gray box is circuit basics. These things will basically apply no matter what you are doing. And we're going to assume that, you know, you have absolutely, basically, you know, one semester's worth of mastery over these topics. You at least know these things, you're comfortable with these ideas, you can work through them. So charge, current, voltage, and power. Voltage sources, current sources, dependent sources, Ohm's law and resistance, series and parallel connections, voltage dividers, current dividers, nodal analysis, KCL, mesh analysis, KBL. You know, there's no getting around this. You know, all the circuits and indeed electrical engineering, you know, hardware stuff is kind of built around these ideas. You can't really get anywhere without it. And then you also did a little bit of linear circuits where you talked about linearity, supervision, Thevenin and Norton, source transformations, capacitors, inductors, a little bit of first order circuits. Those are the RL and RC circuits. You did phasers, complex values and frequencies, and emittance and impedance, or impedance and emittance, maximum power transfer theorem. Uh, some of you would have talked about average reactive power, transformers, and magnetic coupling. Uh, that doesn't really get emphasized, so I put it in dark gray because it gets skipped over a lot. But in the background diamond, you can see the type of responses you should be able to solve. DC circuit responses, zero input responses, step responses, and sinusoidal steady state. So we are assumed we're going to be familiar with that term. So if we say, find the zero input response to this RL circuit, you should have some idea of what to do for that. On the electronic side, you talked about semiconductor materials, free electrons and holes, bonding energy levels, diodes, also known as PN junctions, diode circuits. And then you've touched briefly on MOSFETs, which is the type of transistor you study in MOSFET circuits. Maybe. Some of you didn't get very deep into MOSFET circuits, depending on if you ran out of time in the course. So if we don't blink, you might miss it. Here's ECE 20002 concepts. So we're going to do a lot of mathematical techniques instead of dealing with circuit basics. And then we still talk about linear circuits and electronics. So we're going to start with the electronics portion of this course. And we're going to continue on with ideal operational amplifiers, also known as op amps, op amp internals, um, MOSFETs, more transistors, small signal modeling and current mirrors, single fed amplifiers, MOSFET active loads, low frequency response and high frequency response. And then we're also going to do some mathematical techniques with ODEs, switch systems, uh, impulses, convolution, impulse response, Laplace transforms, pull zero plots. And then we're going to get into some new things, more emittance and impedance emittance, uh, Laplace initial conditions, transfer functions, resonance and second order systems, Bode plots and magnitude frequency scaling, bandpass filters, passive and active, Butterworth filter design, low pass, high pass, bandpass, band stop, real circuit elements and transmission lines, maybe. The grayed out things are things that I'm not sure we will be able to spend much time on. Responses, DC, zero input and zero state, impulse and step response, sinusoidal steady state, and frequency response. 
So hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of a preview, helps solidify some of the previous concepts you learned and prepares you for this course. So here's the course in a nutshell. I try to do this for the courses I teach. Uh, it's my first time teaching ECE 20002 though. Uh, please bear with me, but I do have teaching experience. So uh, teaching uh, an electronics course before. I try to summarize the course into a single slide. So if you wanted to say to your parents, what are you talking about? Or anyone else who asks, what do you actually do in, in this course you, you, you talk about? Here's what, you, here's what you can say. To be brief, ECE 2002 is an introduction course about circuit analysis techniques uh, regarding MOSFET oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, MOSFETs, and op amps, where we talk about DC biasing and current sources, small signal models of amplifier configurations, and the frequency response of amplifiers. We also talk about mathematical techniques for linear circuit analysis, namely an ordinary differential equation or ODE method, convolution method, and Laplace transform and pole zero plot methods. We talk about the frequency response of arbitrary order filters, resonance of second order systems, magnitude and frequency scaling, better with filter design for desired response and implementation. And then finally, we talk about high frequency models of circuit elements, such as circuit element models of high frequency and transmission lines. I know that first sub bullet point seems a little redundant, but bear with me, it, it's kind of there. It needs to be there. Where should we go to review these things on the linear circuits box if we don't remember some of that stuff, Aubrey? Um, well, Aubrey, I recommend uh, if you have the textbook for the previous course, look at that, look over your notes um, and, you know, I have plenty of things I could sort of redirect you to if you want more specific guidance, but I, I would say look over your notes from EC 20001. Uh, that will that will help you uh, remember some of those things. If not, you know, this stuff will be coming up and we'll spend the briefest amount of time reviewing it as it comes up. So, um, you know, reach out to me if, if you have any more specifics you want to discuss. So here is the course outline. So first week, we'll talk about what's in chapters one through five of your book and with quiz one on Friday. Again, remember, it's mandatory to take quiz one in order to get your initial course participation set. Week two, we do chapter six through 11. Week three, 12 through 17, exam one. Exam one will cover lecture sets one and two that uh, will be posted through Brightspace. Uh, week four, chapters eight through 22, and then chapters 23 through 27. And then week six, chapters 28 through 32, and then exam two. So exam two will cover up through uh, either lecture set four or lecture set five, depending on how fast we go through the material. It really depends. And then week seven, we got chapters 33 through 37. And then chapter eight is finals week, where we have chapters 38 through 39. And then, you know, in two days, and then we hopefully have some time to review for the final exam and take the final exam. If I have to cut out some of the transmission lines to make sure we have at least a day of review for the final exam, so be it. I will, I will do that to make sure there's at least one day where we can review the final exam. All right, cool. Looks like chat questions have resolved themselves. So let's go ahead and, and uh, get to know each other a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and do some introductions for myself. So here are my qualifications. I have my bachelor's in electrical engineering uh, here from Purdue back in 20, December of 2014. I then got my master's of science in electrical computer engineering from here in December of 2017. And I'm currently a PhD student at Purdue University under Professor Dan Zhao in the Allen Chip Electromagnetics Laboratory. My technical interests I do numerical electromagnetics for my PhD research, specifically subgrading methods in order to minimize the number of unknowns you solve when trying to figure out how Maxwell's equations play out on the scale of a chip or you know, a microprocessor or something like that. I did simulation of power and energy devices and systems for my master's research. Uh, I'm interested in electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, 
and power electronics, renewable energy, and circuit models. So being able to teach the circuit class actually makes me pretty happy. Uh, Non-technical interests, uh, you'll often see me with IEEE activities. If you're not part of some sort of student organization, I'm going to highly recommend that you join one of them this upcoming fall and spring. Uh, I play trumpet uh, daily. Uh, I'm interested in a lot of the solo repertoire as well as some classical works. So that's what, uh, the kind of stuff I play. I listen to jazz, but I don't play it very often. Uh, Minecraft survival mode. Uh, that's what I'm doing Friday nights. So if you're wondering why I don't have office hours on Friday nights, it's because I'm playing Minecraft uh, with my friends. Uh, I do some chess puzzles online through chess.com and uh, some of the other chess websites. And then I watch way too many YouTube videos in my free time. So if educational, not educational, like I, I have a variety of things that I'm watching. So that's, that's how I live my life. Um, is Sophie online? Sophie is not online. I'll go ahead and give her introduction for her. So she has a master's in engineering uh, in electrical electronic engineering for Robert Gordon University in Scotland. Uh, in 2019, she interned at Leonardo's Radar Test Systems. She's currently working on a PhD in ECE from Purdue since uh, last year. She's interested in electronic warfare, radar and sonar, and some biologically inspired systems specifically for echolocation. So she's got a whole bunch of uh, communications networking signal and image processing type of interests. Uh, technically, non-technically, she does squash, martial arts, and playing tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Uh, Kushagra, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, definitely. Hi, guys. Um, I'm one of the graduate TAs for this course, and my name is Kushagra Kapoor. You can call me Kush, if that's easier. So I'm currently working on a master's degree at Purdue. And basically, I work on um, how we can make better decisions when there's uncertainty. And that's kind of my research. And precisely, I work on causal bandwidths. I like to play FIFA in my spare time. And I cook a lot. And um, I play guitar. So yeah, that's me. It's nice to see you guys here. Thank you, Kushagra. Uh, boy, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to be your one of your GTA through this summer as well. And I received my uh, bachelor degree from the Ohio State University. And I'm a currently a master's student here at Purdue. And my technical interest in um, interests are reader and everything about reader. And I watch football and soccer a lot. So if you're a if you are a football a fan or a soccer fan, we can talk that after class. Thank you. Thank you, Boyu. And Pranav, our UTA uh, currently has an internship, so he's not able to join uh, during the workday, but he's working as a senior on his BSWE from Purdue, uh, technical interests, integrated circuit design, analog RF and mix signal, subcritical devices and embedded systems. Uh, he reached out to me about some of uh, what I did in my previous course uh, on uh, introduction to electronic circuits. Uh, he asked for all my course materials and you know what? He was like, hey, I want to be your TA. And I said, yes, because he showed that much interest in what I did and what I taught already. So, you know, those sorts of connections uh, reward, rewarded Pranav, if you ask me. Uh, his non-technical interests watching movies, sports, academic trivia, and cooking. Uh, so, you know, that's something that uh, Kushagra and Pranav have in common. So one last slide for uh, lecture set zero, and that's motivating this course. So we've got this uh, relatively intimidating circuit going on, where hopefully you can recognize, okay, we have VN of T, so an input waveform on one side, V out of T on the right-hand side, an output waveform, and we've got a bunch of resistors, capacitors, and then these U1, U2, and U3 are op amps. So the question is, oh my gosh, this is gonna take way too long to analyze with ECE 20,001 techniques, 
how would you possibly analyze the circuit with resistors, capacitors, and op amps? And that's something that we hope to do by the end of this course. So motivating this course is just how do we get better at circuit analysis faster and handle more complicated things before we have to break down and ask the computer to do it for us. With that, I close out of those slides. Uh, someone asked Bedrock or Java? Uh, Ishan, I play on Java Edition exclusively. Chess.com rating, uh, piss poor. Uh, wait, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you know, relatively poor. I'm like in the 500s. Like I am, I am really new to chess, so really bad. Uh, that's my 10 minute score. My puzzle score though is like 900. Uh, oh God, can we make a 2K2 and Minecraft server? Um, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see who passes this course. Uh, underground game called Elden Ring. Uh, yeah. Oh no. I know. Curse. I'm sorry for my bad language. I'm, I, I apologize. Normally I'm not like that. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. If you have good grades, you can you can you can play on the Minecraft server for this course. I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let you students organize this. I, I support this endeavor. All right. We have 10 minutes. So I'm going to start on the actual material proper for this course. So I highly recommend you go to Brightspace. I am still sharing my screen. So you should be able to see here's Brightspace. And you know I've got all of these fancy things you see as an instructor. And then in content, you can see the syllabus up there. Course schedule is a fairly new thing. And then start here. And then we've got all these things where we have the lectures. And then I'll eventually add the recordings here. Homework, the assignment documents, and the solutions will go up here. And then all of our exams go here. And then I'll try to make weekly summaries so that you can sort of see what we're going to be talking about each week and stuff like that. But I, as I say up here, you're encouraged to download slash print the copies of the lecture set to take notes on them directly. Uh, that's how I'll be running my life. Uh, you're all rec I recommend you do the same. Um, so here we go. Op and MOSFETs, lecture set one from Tlavich and Turlop chapters one through seven. And you can see here's my printed copies that I'm gonna be referring to with my notes on them. So what are we gonna be cover for so Ideal op amps, first of all, basics, uh, differential amplifier, inverting, non inverting amplifiers, and integrating and differentiating amplifiers. Ooh. Field effect transistors, a lot of subpoints. So it's going to be a, a, a hardcore review of what you did at EC 20001 with a little bit of extension. So we'll talk about basics, you know, the creation of the channel and linear mode, saturation mode. P channel transistors, the IB characteristics, solution procedure examples, design for an operating point. Uh, we have FET current sources and MOSFET non ideality. We also have small signal models and active loads. And then topic five common source amplifiers, including amplifier basics. And then we talk about the common drain and common gate amplifiers, summarize a little there, and then we get into op amp construction. So we are going to start off this course with a brand new circuit element, the operational amplifier. So first of all, what is an operational amplifier? Uh, the operational amplifier, op amp for short, we want to be on good terms, good speaking terms with our op amps because they are good friends. Uh, and they're gonna help us out a lot uh, in circuit design and show up later on in this course. So we want to be on familiar terms with them. The op amp is a high gain building block in linear circuits. It takes one or more input voltages and it produces a linear related output voltage. And again, linear uh, is the same linear as in linear differential equations or linear circuits. So, you know, it's not just, you know, scaling, you know, AX plus B, it's, you know, any sort of linear combination of derivative operators. Some possible applications of op amps. You can add or subtract voltages. 
We can scale, which is another word for amplify a voltage or voltage difference, uh, take integrals or derivatives of voltages, logically compare them, simulate other components, oscillators, uh, and then some sort of nonlinear tasks that we won't ever really touch. But oh my gosh, op amps can do a lot. They are the heart of analog electronics. And if there's ever wondering, man, how do I do an mathematical operation? The answer is an operational amplifier. That's where it gets the name from. So the op amp symbol looks like this on the left where we can see it's got a reference designator U1. So that's basically the name we would give it on a schematic. And then it's got a triangle here where the right word tip of the triangle denotes the output. That's a typo right there. Uh, where we have V out and I out there. On the left side, the minus terminal is called the inverting input and it takes a V minus in and I minus in get to that later. And then the plus terminal is called the non-inverting input with V plus and I plus going in. Uh, we have two connections at the top, V plus and V minus. These are the supply connections. So to a positive voltage supply and a negative voltage supply. Uh, most of the time we will emit this and you won't see the connections to the supply. We will just assume that it's trivially connected, you know, by a short circuit towards uh, the most positive supply and the most negative supply available in a circuit schematic. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the orientations of the minus and plus. Sometimes, uh, you know, the problems on your homework will get tricky or exams and they will flip the symbol upside down. So the plus is on top and the minus is on bottom. You have to keep track of which is which. They behave differently. I'm going to say, you know, either use the, let's see, this isn't WebEx, you don't have the raise your hand functionality. Just unmute yourself and, and, and get my attention if I go a long time without answering the chat questions. So ideal op amp conditions. So we may assume that the op amp is a perfectly linear device when we meet the following five ideal op amp conditions. So these are things that you should commit to memory. So one, infinite differential gain, two, infinite input resistance, three, zero output resistance, four, infinite bandwidth, and five, zero DC offset. Notice these are all infinite zero type of things. So notice we're saying the gain is infinite, like it can make an infinitely large voltage from a finite voltage. That doesn't seem quite right, but it's part of our assumptions. Uh, the resistance looking into the device is infinite, but there's zero resistance looking out of the device. That seems like it'd be impossible to build. Bandwidth is infinite, means it works the same across every single frequency you can think of. Wow. And then there's no offset as well. And then like, you know, I think if you're a very formal study, if you do a very formal study of op amps, there's like an additional six conditions. But for now, we'll just stick with five for this course and say it's good enough. So we analyze a circuit with ideal op amps as a sort of black box model where we don't care about what's inside the op amp with the following rules. One, there's a virtual short condition that causes the input terminals to have the same potential. So V plus in our schematic symbol should be equal to V minus by the virtual short condition. Simultaneously, there's zero input currents. I plus and I minus are both zero. There's no current drawn into the device. And then the output current I out can be whatever it needs to be. So you can't really write an equation based around I out because you don't know what it's going to be. So for the ideal or for the differential amplifier, we have this configuration right here where we have V3 coming out of the output of op amp U1. We have V1 going into RN to node A, which connects to the inverting input. RF connects to the output. And V2 connects to node B through RN, goes to the non-inverting input, and then passes forward through RF to V4, such that V3 minus V4 makes V out. 
remember our pass sign convention, V out is gonna be equal to V3 minus V4. So we have two input resistors Rn, an upper feedback resistor RF, and a lower feed forward resistor RF, you know, that has the same value. If we use KCL at node A and node B, apply the virtual short condition and solve for V out, we should get this sort of sequence of equations uh, where you'll say, okay, by doing some K, KV, uh, K, me, KCL, V1 minus VA over RN plus V3 minus, R, minus VA over RF equals zero. Simultaneously, V2 minus VB over RN plus V4 minus VB over RF equals zero. Notice I did all currents going in. If you do currents going out, you get a very similar answer. It just your, your signs will be different, but it'll be equal to zero, so it doesn't matter. I just summed up all the currents in, set them equal to zero, KCL. And then we can solve these equations for V3 and V4 using some algebra. You shall get something like this. V3 is RF over RN times VA minus V1 plus VA. And then very similar for V4, except for V2 in place of V1. Notice that all useful op-amp circuits are going to have a feedback path from the output to the inverting input. So we always have something, some branch of the circuit connecting the output of the op-amp where the pointy end is back to the minus side input. And then the diff amp is going to be very useful in benchtop. This differential amplifier specifically is very useful inside benchtop laboratory equipment. We need to get very sensitive voltage measurements and you need to take the difference between two signals. And in fact, you're going to use a differential amplifier if you decide to take ECE 20,008, which most of you are going to end up doing. And then finally, we are going to get a differential amplifier gain. Uh, v out is V3 minus V4, which is RF over RN V2 minus V1. It's a scaled version of the difference of the two inputs, hence the name. The gain is RF over RN, and it doesn't depend on any op amp parameters. And like any good op amp in the linear region, none of the op amp parameters should appear inside. Otherwise, the complicated arrangement of nonlinear components within the op amp will cause distortion which will change the shape of a waveform and not be a good amplifier. And the goal going forward is not to memorize amplifier configurations, but to drive the output voltage equation quickly. Thus, we have reached the end of our scheduled class time. Where is ground? That is a good question. Uh, in this sort of equation, or in this sort of configuration, you wouldn't necessarily have ground be explicitly labeled. V1 and V2 would be referenced with respect to ground as well as V3 and V4. And there would be supply connections that would be, say, for example, plus 10 volts and minus 10 volts with respect to ground. So this is meant to be operate basic, based off of like a, a positive voltage and a negative voltage. It doesn't need an explicit ground connection. Uh, it's kind of implied by everything else. I will take any final questions and I am going to leave the comfort of my own home and head to office hours in Wong 3017. If anyone wants to meet me there, I encourage you to be there I'll, you know, sometime within the next couple hours. Homework, is it okay if we do our paper and scan the PGS for PDF? Sure, just use ink please, Jeff, and anyone else. We don't want uh, to have to like strain our eyes to read graphite on paper. Thank you very much for coming today. I hope to get to know all of you a little bit better uh, during the next eight weeks. Goodbye, everyone. Can we use a software like Notability or GoodNotes and convert to a PDF? I'm not familiar with those, uh, but if it's anything like OneNote, that should be fine. Thanks for asking, Jaya. Oh, you're welcome, everyone. I, I have to work for such you know, appreciative people very often. You're welcome.
Michael, not Mike, if it would be Shaw. Have a nice day. Life is short for Michael, so I have heard. So long, everyone. And are two people not paying attention? We'll see. <laughs>